The national manhunt for a former soldier suspected of terrorism continues today, with the police saying he might have left the country as there have been no confirmed sightings in the 36 hours since he broke out of Wandsworth. As sources have told GB News, the 21-year-old is accused of spying for Iran. Is Daniel Abed Khalif. Um, he was awaiting trial in relation to terrorism while incarcerated at Wandsworth Prison in southwest London. The prison, of course, will now be facing an inquiry over his escape. Uh, let's talk to Peter Blexley, former Met Police detective, who joins us now. Peter, good to see you this morning. Um, there's questions about how he got out, of course. First and foremost, though, how concerned do you think we as members of the public should be? Well, I think this is now becoming a massive embarrassment for our nation. First of all, it started off as a hugely embarrassing situation for Wandsworth Prison. But now, of course, all the resources of the police have so far been unable to find him. And yesterday, the Justice Secretary, Alex Chalk, stood up in Parliament and said very forcefully, on two occasions, he will be found. Well, as of yet... He hasn't been. So, as I say, what started off as a, a massive embarrassment is now a huge and acute embarrassment. And the longer it goes on, the worse it's going to get. When a prisoner is on the run like this, um, what usually happens? I mean, you, you always um, hear from people that they, they have to go somewhere and it's only someone, there are very few people they can trust. So ultimately, could he be given up? Well, what we now know, as a result of, once again, what the Justice Secretary said to Parliament yesterday, was that straps were found on the underneath of the lorry. So to me, that says one thing only. Strapping equals planning. So there's an element of pre-planning about this escape. We know it was clearly planned within the prison. I'd like to know how did he get these straps? What's their original purpose? Was it something that had actually been adapted or repurposed and turned into these straps? So if there's planning on the inside of the prison, worryingly for the police, I would strongly suggest there's been planning on the outside of the prison. So when he parted company from that lorry, was he able to meet up with someone who could supply him with a change of clothing, because he had very distinctive red and white chef's trousers on, a change of clothing, food, cash, documentation, a passport possibly, and as the commander of the search for him last night said, that very senior police officer, he could already have left the country. And if that is the case, and just if he pops up in a couple of days' time giving a press conference from Tehran, for example, well, heads, very senior heads will roll. I was going to say, Peter, I mean, it's, uh, what, what do you think the chances are that he got straight out of the country by hook or by crook? Because, I mean, you'd be, if it is a planned, you know, a, a, a properly planned escape, you'd be crazy to stay in the UK, wouldn't you? Yes, I think he would. And let's face it, hundreds of people come into the UK every day on small boats. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility that one fugitive with a bit of help on the outside who get in a boat and go in the opposite direction. We shall have to wait and see. Of course, we also have a considerable number of small airfields in the UK, as well as the major airport hubs. So until, or hopefully when, he is captured, we're not going to know the answers to these questions. And the red faces in the prison service, the police service and the government are just going to get redder and the embarrassment will be heaped upon them. Oh. OK, got yeah, to leave it there. We're out of time. Yeah, Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Let's hope with next time we speak about it. It's, yeah, as you say, him. he's been caught. It's worrying. It is very worrying. Lots yes, of questions to be asked be on that one.